there is only one person who has single-handedly revolutionized the adult entertainment industry and turned it into a multi-million dollar business endeavor. We are talking about a man who has profoundly influenced society in the last 50 years while his publication remains the world's best-selling men's lifestyle magazine. It has not just transformed a media empire but is today one of the most recognizable brands in history. Today, we take a look at the life of Hugh Hefner, the founder of one of the most sensational brands in the world, Playboy. Hefner became an entrepreneur at a time when the term was a distant reality to the American markets. Born into a strictly Methodist family, Hefner, with an IQ of 152, may have been severely disinterested in school, but he always had an affinity towards writing. Hefner rallied to become the president of the student council, and upon winning the position, he started and ran the school's first newspaper. This marked the beginning of his journalistic aspirations that would eventually turn him into the owner of a million dollar company. He studied at the Chicago Art Institute for a summer before enrolling at the University of Illinois at Urbana. Hefner earned his bachelor's degree in 1949. The same year, he married his first wife, Mildred Williams. He later did a semester of graduate school work in the area of sociology, focusing on the Sex Research Institute established by Alfred Kinsey. By the early 1950s, Hefner had landed a copywriting job at the Chicago office of Esquire magazine. Hefner opted not to remain with the publication which moved to New York when he was denied a $5 raise. Later, out of his own, Hefner was determined to start his own publication. He raised $8,000 from 45 investors, including $2,000 from his mother and brother combined, to launch Playboy magazine. Hefner had planned to title the magazine as Tag Party but was forced to change the name to avoid a trademark infringement with the existing Stag magazine. A colleague suggested the name Playboy after a defunct automobile company. Hefner liked the name as he thought it reflected high living and sophistication. Later, Hefner produced the first edition of Playboy out of his south side home. It hit the newsstands in December 1953, but the magazine did not carry a date as Hefner was not sure as to whether or not a second issue would be produced. To help ensure its success, Hefner had purchased a nude photograph of actress Marilyn Monroe, which he had been taken some years back, and placed it in the centerfold of the magazine. The first issue quickly sold more than 50,000 copies and became an instant sensation. Well, America in the 1950s was attempting to distance itself from nearly 30 years of war and economic depression. For many, the magazine proved to be a welcome antidote to the sexual repression of the era. For those who initially dismissed the magazine as just a pornographic publication, Playboy soon broadened its circulation with thoughtful articles and an urbane presentation. The Playboy logo, depicting the stylized profile of a rabbit wearing a tuxedo bow tie, appeared in the second issue and remained the trademark icon of the brand. Hefner chose the rabbit for its humorous sexual connotation and because the image was frisky and playful. Hefner later decided that his magazine would instead cater to the cosmopolitan intellectual male and feature more overt sexual imagery. Hefner never lost sight of the fact that it was pictures of nude women which ultimately sold the magazine. Work on the publication consumed much of Hefner's life and marriage. By the late 1950s, Playboy's circulation had surpassed that of rival magazine Esquire with sales reaching a million copies a month. But personal issues loomed Hefner. He and his first wife got divorced in 1959. Later, as a single man, Hefner had many girlfriends and became known for his romantic and unpretentious presence. In the 1960s, Hugh Hefner became the persona of Playboy. He adopted a wide range of pursuits and socialized with the famous and wealthy always in the company of young, beautiful women. As the magazine's increased success came to the attention of the mainstream public, Hefner was happy to portray himself as the charismatic icon and spokesperson for the sexual revolution of the 1960s. This was also Playboy's golden age as the ever-increasing circulation allowed Hefner to build a vast empire of private key clubs. Over the years, 
Hefner's Playboy Enterprises also built hotel resorts, started modeling agencies, and operated a number of media endeavors. Hefner later hosted two short run television series named Playboy's Penthouse and Playboy After Dark. The publication slowly began to garner a reputation for serious journalism as author Alex Haley launched the Playboy interview in 1962 with jazz great Miles Davis. But Hefner's success didn't come without controversy. In 1963, he was arrested and stood trial for selling obscene literature after an issue of Playboy featured nude photos of Hollywood actress Jane Mansfield. However, the negative publicity didn't affect the reputation of Hefner or Playboy Enterprises. By 1971, Hefner had built Playboy Enterprises into a major corporation. The company went public and the magazine circulation hit 7 million copies a month, earning $12 million profit in 1972. Later, in the mid-1970s, however, Playboy Enterprises fell on hard times. The United States hit a recession and Playboy faced increasing competition from more explicit men's magazines such as Penthouse. At first, Hefner responded by presenting more revealing photos of women in less wholesome poses and circumstances. However, some advertisers rebelled and the circulation fell even further. And from then on, Hefner concentrated on the company's operations on magazine publishing. Playboy Enterprises eventually divested itself from its unprofitable clubs and hotels and downsized its ancillary media endeavors. The magazine later introduced its new photography standards and began presenting features like Girls of the Big Ten. In 1988, Hefner turned over control of Playboy Enterprises to his daughter Christie, naming her as the next CEO of the company. She played a key role in directing Playboy's ventures in cable television, video production and online programming, with Hefner continuing to serve as the magazine's editor-in-chief. Later, Christy Hefner stepped down from her position in January 2009. In October 2015, Playboy's chief content officer Cody Jones revealed to the New York Times that the magazine was going to make a radical change in early 2016 as part of redesign. Jones and Hefner had agreed to stop using nude photos of women. The March 2016 issue featured bikini-clad model Sarah McDaniel on the cover, making it as the first time Playboy presenting itself as a non-nude magazine. However, this policy failed miserably, and later, Playboy went back to its basics, featuring topless playmate Elizabeth Allen as Miss Mars 2017, alongside the headline, Naked is Normal. Well, over the years, a range of female celebrities have appeared in Playboy, including Madonna, Kate Moss, Jenny McCarthy, Drew Barrymore and appearing on most covers was Pamela Anderson. Well, Hefner has received numerous awards for his contributions to society and the publishing industry. He was also inducted into the Hall of Fame of the American Society of Magazine Editors in 1998. This is a story that has fascinated America for decades. Hugh Hefner has now turned 91 but his shrewd sense of purpose and business acumen remain as sharp as they were when he first launched Playboy 64 years ago. As for his future plans are concerned, this is what the legend has to say. Thank you so much everyone for suggesting us to bring Playboy and Hugh Hefner's success story. We hope you liked it. Do let us know whose story do you want to see next in the comment section below and we'll soon have it uploaded on this channel. For more inspirational stories and updates from the startup world, visit our website startupstories.in. Till then, stay motivated.